Hello my quilting friends, my name is Leah Day and welcome to this Frame Quilting Friday video. Back on the Q-Zone once again and I have a new baby quilt to start. This is a 44 inch stack and whack baby quilt. You can find the free quilt pattern at leahday.com slash whack4. And this is a great choice because it's nice big shapes. Uh, it's a 44 inch square quilt so it's not super huge and you can make it with fat quarters in an hour or so. So it's a really good choice for your next quilt on the Q-Zone frame. And there's a reason why I'm kind of starting small and gradually getting bigger with each quilt. And the reason is I'm learning right along with you guys. And I don't wanna jump straight into a queen or king size quilt on this frame because I could easily get overwhelmed and stressed out by that. <laughs> so my last quilt, the Patriotic Baby Quilt, was 36 inches wide. It was perfect choice because I could quilt all the way from one edge to the other on this frame without having to advance it side to side. Well, this quilt at 44 inches wide is a little bit just beyond the size of the frame. So I'm gonna have to advance it side to side for each row and then advance it forward through the frame. So a lot of new things to try out in this video. And then other thing that I'm trying out is no leader cloth. So this quilt was prepared slightly differently from my last one. I'm gonna talk you through it. Uh, the batting, the backing fabric, uh, I had dad actually piece this for me. <laughs> so dad pieced a lot of fat quarters and random pieces of uh, uh, pink fabric together to make the backing. And we intentionally made it a good 10 inches longer on the top and bottom. Uh, those edges especially because you need to have extra fabric in order to wrap around that bar in order to secure it. Batting, you want that to extend, honestly, I would prefer that to extend all the way to the edge because the batting makes, you know, makes it thicker and that makes the clamp clamp on tighter and hold fast. So, you know, if you're preparing this, please don't feel like that's a waste. If you're not using your leader cloth, that's what you have to do to the top and bottom edges. You have to have an extra 10 inches maybe a little bit more of fabric. Otherwise it's gonna be real difficult to quilt to the edges. You're probably gonna end up having to pin extra fabric to the bottom edge. Uh, so keep that in mind if you decide you don't wanna get leader cloth or you don't happen to have it or your leader cloth is occupied with another quilt. <laughs> and also understand that you can make your own leader cloth. You can sew it yourself. And there are instructions from sewing your own leader cloth within the hoop frame quilt instructions, the build instructions, that's included. So you can always just sew it yourself. Okay, so now that I have my quilt prepared and ready to go, and all I did here, uh, there's a little bit of confusion as far as the basting of a quilt. It's not really basted, it's more like it's layered. So uh, kind of stretch out the backing on a tabletop or on the floor if you don't have uh, a very big table then spread it out, smooth it out nicely, then place your batting on top. And I like to pin across the top of the batting just so it doesn't float around. And then you layer on your quilt top. Again, you wanna make sure that quilt top is pinned so that the edge is 10 inches from the edge of your backing fabric. So there's my quilt top and it's just been pinned nicely along that edge, but you can see there's no other pens in the center of the quilt. That's kind of loosey-goosey. And as I quilt and it's tensioned within the hoop frame, then that's going to kind of lay together and sort itself out as I go. And I'm not quilting very densely on these quilts, guys. This is not a show quilt. This is a baby quilt. And a baby quilt needs to be soft and cuddly. It does not need to be quilted to death. And so that's why I think this method works really well for this frame. And you are getting that nice tensioning, the same kind of tensioning that you get with a three rail system, like the continuum quilting frame, but it's a little bit different on the hoop frame. That's why we have to make sure that top row is penned and it's secure in place and it's nice and straight across the quilt. Okay, there's one other thing. <laughs> I know this is a long intro guys, sorry. But there's one other thing that I've changed to my carriage and that is I've added a book and this is kind of a special book. It just happens to be the right width that I could place it there in the back of the carriage and it just floats right there. And then when I bring my machine back, you can see that stops the machine from the needle bar getting anywhere close to that back bar. 
And this is really important because if you remember two videos ago, definitely go and watch this video, I'll link it up. Uh, I was just kind of quilting back and I was telling you guys multiple times, don't stitch too far close to that bar because your needle bar will crash into it and it'll make a really loud sound and scary. And then I went and did it. Uh, and so uh, a, a quilter wrote into me, Linda, and she said, hey, I put a block of wood back there and that stopped it from happening. And I was gonna go cut a block of wood and then I was like, I don't have a block of wood that right size but I did have a book. So I think this is kind of a standard thing. I don't know that uh, that's gonna change much for your machine, although it may, but that's a solution. If you have a machine about the same size as mine, then a six by nine inch hardback book will probably work pretty good. If not, measure it and go cut a block of wood. And what that does is it stops your machine from going back further than you want it to go. So now I have no risk of my needle bar crashing against the back of that bar. So that was a super, super awesome tip. Thank you, Linda, for sending that in. I really appreciate that. So now that everything's set up and we have a game plan, let's get started quilting this baby quilt together. So first thing is to roll the machine over to the far left side and then back and forth to make sure that the machine completely clears the side of the rail. So I'm going back and forth and I can start about right there. And just to mark that place, I'm gonna drop my channel locks. That's that lock right there. And that's gonna lock the machine in that position. I can still move it side to side. So if I want to, I can also lock this back lock there too. When Stice says the machine, the frame is not so wide that you can't reach across it. So I know that's really where I wanna get started. So now I'm gonna slip the quilt underneath the foot. And again, the most important thing I think about getting started is to not try and push it with this first row, meaning I'm not gonna try and get that quilt, you know, right as close as I can. Instead, I'm gonna give myself an inch between the foot where I've just positioned it and the edge of the quilt. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of space, a little bit of breathing room, and that will result in a smaller first row, but that's okay. All right, so starting from the middle, I wanna make sure that this is roughly straight and this is where I wanna get started. That looks good. And I'm gonna place my first clamp here in the middle. And you can see as it clamps, that brings the quilt closer to the bar anyway. So this is another reason why, you know, just from the very beginning, don't try and get it too close because you might find you clamp it and then you have to take the clamp off and do it again because it's come too close once it moves. Whoops. There we go. So see, as I clamp that on, that made the quilt shift that much. Okay, and I can already tell my batting's doing something kind of strange right here. So I'm gonna lift up on this one and smooth out that batting a bit. And there's like a wrinkle there. There we go. And clamp that back in place. And then one more time on this edge. And I can say, I do think that this is easier with the leader cloth, but Honestly, this would not be so bad if my batting was a little bit longer. You can see the batting is hitting right on the top of that rail, kind of making it loosey-goosey, and it's real easy for that to go wonky. So it would be nice if the batting was either cut short or extended all the way. And I think extended all the way, even though it wastes a little bit of batting, you know, it's gonna get cut off when I go to put on my binding. I think that would have been better. And with every quilt, we learn something new with every quilt we just gain a little bit of knowledge of what we're gonna do differently next time. Okay, so overall I think that's good. And you can check and see if you're straight uh, and that, that top edge of the quilt is actually running straight by locking the side channel lock that locks the machine to going side to side. And then if you roll it over and that quilt top is running at a diagonal to where your foot is, then you know you need to maybe change it up a little bit and maybe reclamp it. But this is running nice and straight. As you can see, the foot is basically running right on the edge of that quilt and that looks really good. Okay, so now from here, I'm gonna roll up that fabric, the backing fabric and tighten up my clamp so that hooks in and then tightens up just like so. And my quilt obviously was a lot bigger that I just finished. So now I need to tighten up those elastic straps quite a bit. And then because now they're so long, I end up with a lot 
of extra space here, then I gotta make sure to tuck that so I can see it on the front. So that way it doesn't accidentally lip underneath and get stitched to the back of my quilt. Okay. And this first row, guys, I really hope that you'll expect that row to be slower than all the other rows. It is your starting row of the quilt. Uh, you're just getting going, you know, you might be starting cold <laughs> a little bit, you know, just like think of a warm up, you know, and that first row is going to be the hardest because especially if you're not using the leader cloth, then you're working with basically just a piece of backing fabric that's holding the quilt to the frame. And so things are not going to be as easy as they will feel later on in the process. So at any time, if your machine is in your way during the starting process, just roll it down the frame, no big deal. And that way you can get to all of your clamps and get that to tighten up. So before you can see how much of a difference that was how, where the strap was for the end of my last baby quilt. And I will be at that stage again when I get to that point when this is all, you know, my last row basically, but right now I need to tighten that up almost all the way. And what this does, basically if I tug on this, you can see it slips. So it's really the elastic, it's a combination of the clamp and the elastic strap because once you've got that elastic strap on there and it's tightened down, then things really don't move or shift. So there we go. So we're almost ready to go. I just need to press on my two front clamps like so, give them a little ratchet, and we are ready to start quilting. Okay, so first row again is gonna be taking out all of these pens. So I'm gonna grab a little bin here, something to put them in, and unlock my channel lock. And I'm gonna take out about five inches of pins here right along this top edge. And I have decided to quilt this quilt also with an all over quilting design called Sharp Stippling. I know that you guys would like to see some ruler foot quilting and stuff, and I will probably mix this up and do some rulers further down. Uh, but, you know, I really want to just get started and learn the side to side shifting first uh, before I start trying to do multiple things at the same time. So let's just, you know, let's crawl first, then walk then run and then swim, right? All right, so here we go. Drop my ruler foot down. You always wanna have your ruler foot in the down position. I'm gonna begin about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch from that edge of the quilt. Hang on to this top thread as I needle down, needle back up and then pull the machine away. And that brings up my top thread. Okay, I need to double check that I have set my sh machine up properly for free motion quilting, and I don't think I have, all I need to do is to lower the stitch length to the lowest setting. This machine can go down to zero, but some machines can just go down to like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, that's just fine. Your lowest setting is a-okay. All right, I'm gonna pulse. That's just using the speed controller here uh, on the machine just to bring the needle down. And I'll pulse one more time just to get started. Okay, so I don't really know what my speed's gonna do when I get started. So this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> I can just see how fast we're gonna go. I am feeling like it's a little shifty on this side, so I'm gonna grab my side leader cloth. And I got a few questions about this and the side clamps too. So let me grab this and show you how it works. So this little square is your side leader cloth. And you can just pin this to the backing and batting. I'm just gonna do three or four pins here. And this is just adding that little bit of extra side tension. And I think that will offer a good bit of stability. You know, it was just kind of wobbling a bit right in that area. And then now I've got that piece of cloth. I can just clamp that and tighten it just exactly the same way as the other clamps. Okay, now down on this other end, I don't need the cloth because the quilt itself is curling over this corner. I need to take out a few pins here that will get in the way of my clamp, but I can just pop this down right on that rail and tension it this side that way. Okay, so there we go. We are ready to get stitching. Uh, I have my channel locks locked down so that way the machine's going to stitch in a straight line and that's just gonna stabilize this top 
edge. And that's what I'm aiming to do. Okay, so I hit the start button and see how fast I'm stitching. Now, if I wanna just do a basting stitch, then I could go really fast because you know this is a speed controller I'm using that's just controlling the speed of the machine, slower or faster. And now it, you know, I have to balance that with the speed the machine is moving when I'm pushing it across the frame. And I do have the Sure Stitch Regulator. I'm gonna put that on the machine and try that out in a future video. But for right now, I'm just playing around with the speed controller. So let's say I wanted to do a basting stitch, meaning like, you know, nice big chunky stitches so that this could come out easily. Well, then all I would need to do is run the machine slowly and then push, so run the machine speed here on the speed controller slowly and then pull the machine over fast. So there I go, quick, 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 and my stitches are getting pretty big. <laughs> so they would be easy to take out if I wanted to take them out, but that's right on the edge of the quilt, so that's gonna get covered up with binding, so I'm not worried about that. And that's the nice thing. This is kind of a takeover from long arm quilting on a normal three rail frame, like the continuum frame. I just like to get started with this you know, little row uh, single line of stitching, I just really think that it helps stabilize the layers and really get things on track. Just makes things easy to get started. So here we go. Now I'm gonna quilt over and then I'm gonna stop right here. And I'm actually gonna go grab some masking tape and I'm gonna mark where this position is. So that way I know this is where I'm gonna be stopping and then the rest of the quilt is what I'm gonna quilt whenever I advance side to side. So here we go. Just place that piece of tape down. Now you could run a line of pens too. You know, it's really totally up to you. I like the blue tape because it's just really easy to see and it's gonna stand out against this quilt. Uh, so I like that. Now I decided to do, as I said, a large scale sharp stippling. And let's talk about that design now. I'm gonna quilt that design back across this row. So I have a single row and as much quilted in this space as I can possibly quilt with this first pass. So here we go. Turn on the machine. Whoops, you know what I forgot? I forgot to unlock my channel locks. <laughs> You can't move the machine in all directions if you have your channel logs going, so there we go. Okay, another thing I'm kind of noticing, things went a, just a little bit funny here as I stitched that down, so I'm gonna reclamp this. You know, this is a thing. I think at any point in time, you just gotta be looking at your quilt, paying attention to it. If at any point in time, things just aren't looking the way you think they should look, puddly, pleaty, you know, excess fabric, something like that. That just looked like I was getting some baggy fabric in this area in particular. So that was a signal to me. I think I need to just reclamp and then tension that back up again and see, I think that looks a little bit better. Okay, all right, so here we go. I've got my channel locks unlocked. I've got my speech controller right here. I'm gonna click it on and go into sharp stippling. And now my first row here, stitching down, is to just figure out where the end of that frame is. There it is, cool. So it's about a half of an inch before that seam line. So that's gonna be really useful. I can kind of visually see that seam line and say, okay, I can get up to it, but I can't really go beyond that. Now my stitches are looking on a big side. So that means I need to increase the speed on the speed controller. That's this dial right here. I just increase the speed a little bit and that's gonna let me go faster. There we go. Whoa, that's fast. But you know what? Check out my stitches. You know, that actually is working for the speed that I'm quilting this design. So I think you can hopefully see what I'm quilting, the design I'm quilting here while I moved into this green. It's a little bit less busy. So sharp stippling has a very similar rule to stippling and it's a very, very good all over quilted design. So it's basically coming to sharp points and then wiggling off in another direction. So here you can see it's like, it's like flame shapes. So here I'm wiggling over, coming to another point and back down and I'm keeping my speed consistent, meaning I'm moving my hands on the frame repositioning the machine smoothly and evenly and that is resulting in consistent stitches 
Now, if I suddenly slow down my hands, you see my stitches become microscopic. <laughs> well, that's because I slowed down my hands, but the machine was still running at the same rate, so my stitches got super, super tiny. So I've gotta kinda just keep that in mind. If I'm going to slow down my hands, I need to just adjust that knob on the speed controller with my thumb and slow down the speed controller. All right, so this is looking pretty good. Now, as for standing up and quilting, this is working well. I mean, I, I like the feel of this, but I won't lie, that bar in the front is still kind of getting in my way. It's not bad, but it just I'm finding myself having the, the tendency to lean back with my shoulders and my back and kind of uh, angle my neck forward because that bar is, it's not really, really in my way. I can see the foot even right here. I can see the foot clearly, but I can't see what's behind it. And that's what I think is tempting to kind of bend back a little bit just so I can see, okay, where am I going next? I'm, I'm stitching backwards whenever I make that movement with my body. So that's really interesting. It's not bad. Uh, and I think if I had a really tall stool, like I've got a drafting stool uh, that I have uh, in my kitchen, so I could pull that out and uh, set down, and more than likely that would put me in a position where I'm a little bit lower, and that would work. I could still be a seated uh, situation, and maybe that bar wouldn't be in my way. So that's just one of those things. You know, you kind of visually have to keep looking at it. I have heard from some quilters that have machines with a lot more bulk here in this top section. And they have mentioned, you know, using this frame as a set down, mostly because of that bulky nature of their machine. They just had trouble really seeing that needle clearly and feeling like that they, they could form the design easily. So there we go. First row, almost finished, of sharp stippling. I really love this texture, as you can see, quilted this on roughly a half inch scale. So that's a half of an inch between those lines of quilting. And that's going to result in a nice soft baby quilt. But here's the thing, guys. No, there's no rule that says that whatever design you start with, that you have to keep quilting that same design through the entire quilt. You don't have to. You can change it up any time. And I'm actually going to do some ruler foot quilting on this quilt. I'm going to do uh, some different designs and play around with lots of different ideas. So I hope that you're excited about seeing more quilting within this beautiful pink and blue fabric. Okay, so at this stage, we have quilted all that we can quilt within the frame on this quilt in this first pass right now. So that means we need to advance it to the side. We need to go this way. So first step is going to be breaking thread and see if I was all the way over here and I was still quilting my sharp stippling design, I probably wouldn't break thread. But where I am right now in this corner, I don't think I really, well, I guess I could stitch another straight line of quilting across this top edge and that would be, you know, nice and stable, make it easier to bind, kind of a victory lap. Let's do that because my plan is to advance the quilt and keep the needle in the quilt. And there's a method to my madness <laughs> with this idea. I know that sounds maybe a little bit crazy, but there's a method to my madness. And that is, I think, by keeping the, a needle in the quilt where you wanna get started, that's gonna make it just a little bit easier to advance. So here we go. This is where I am. Uh, I wanna continue my sharp stippling design, kind of wiggling out over here once I advance the quilt. My needle's in the down position, my foot is down. So this is exactly where I wanna get started when I continue quilting the rest of this row. So I think this is the perfect place. I'm not gonna break thread. I'm not going to lift my needle and I'm not gonna lift my foot. I'm gonna leave everything exactly the way it is and now I'm gonna take my clamps off. So this is a little takeaway from quilting, something I learned kind of with quilting with pantographs on my continuum frame. And please come and see how that worked. Uh, you can check out all of those videos at leahday.com panto. And that will teach you a lot about pantographs in general, 
but it's going to be a very different situation when we quilt with pantographs uh, on this frame. So just understand that uh, this method that I'm trying out here, because I actually have not tested this yet, uh, just comes from that. Just something I learned from working with pantos on my other frame, and I'm curious to see if this is going to work on this one. So here we go. I have removed all of the clamps. There's a side clamp too. There we go. And now I'm going to take the quilt and the machine. I'm holding the two of them together and we're going to go shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. <laughs> Just like so. Now we don't actually need to move this like all the way down to the end because I just need to be able to quilt, you know, basically to that edge. And I just need to make sure that that corner is going to be within the quiltable space on the frame. So if I look at this, this looks pretty good to me. I don't think I need to keep shifting it that way. So kind of only a minimal shift, only as much as you need for the quilt you're working on. And then now I can pop my clamps back in place. And I want to clamp always from the middle and then I kind of sort it out from there. So here we go. I think honestly locking your channel, if you did a straight line across, locking your channel locks might also be a good idea because, and I didn't have mine locked down. And the reason why I think that would be a good idea too is because that would have locked me so that the machine couldn't move forward and back and the quilt would still be in the same position when I reclamped it. So food for thought. Like I said, I'm learning right along with you guys and figuring this out as I go. And I love it because it's a fun challenge. It really is. This is shaking things up. I've never, um, I've never felt this kind of intrigued and challenged by a particular quilt uh, frame or machine before. So I think this is just wonderful. All right, so there we go. Got last clamp in place. And I just generally want to make sure that this is straight across. It does not have to be perfect with the quilting design I've chosen. Let me give you an example of, of when you do need it to be perfect. If you did straight lines across your quilt, then you would need to make sure that you have exactly the same spacing here as you do down here throughout the quilt. And that I would say would be pretty tedious and pretty challenging. So that's not a design I would recommend, at least not in the beginning. So here we go. I'm gonna get things clamped back up, tightened back up and tuck those straps in place. I do think that this gets faster and easier when you have more quilt to clamp down and it holds the quilt more securely too, which is nice. Yeah, the thicker the fabric you have between the clamp and the strap, the better it holds. You know, when you have that nice, even though when you have that nice big roll, I know it takes up space in the arm of the machine, but it just holds more securely and it doesn't feel like it's on, you know, the risk of pulling out. That's the thing. When I had the leader cloth on, uh, I'd say the advantage there was I had that, you know, it's kind of had a thick cord in the leader cloth top and that made it much more stable feeling with this first row. So I will be honest, my preference now, having done a quilt, this starting row without leader cloth, having done a starting row with leader cloth, I prefer with leader cloth. I think that's the better way to go. All right, grab my long clamps and press down. Give it a rotate and down here, same thing, press down, give it a rotate. And then I've still got this loosey goosey side. So I'm going to do the same thing. Grab my little square of leader cloth here. This could be a square of fabric. It could be a pot holder. <laughs> you can grab anything you got around the house, you know, and it's just some long pins, you know, three, four pins in this really works just fine. And that locks that in place. And then I can use the side clamp on this side, give that a rotate and side clamp on this side. Here we go. Perfect, nicely tensioned. You can start to see that beautiful quilting too. Okay, I'm gonna drop my channel lock because I wanna stitch that straight line across this top edge. Actually, 
let me unlock that and I can just show you what it's like if you don't stitch that straight line across. Because, you know, it's one thing for me to tell you that I think that that's the better way to do it. It's another thing for me to show it to you. So I don't have anything securing this and I'm just gonna click the machine on. And so me personally, I just feel like that's going just a little loosey goosey and it's hard to visualize, you know, how much I can quilt in and it's not secure. So I feel even more pressure to keep my hand here on the quilt. Now something I've just noticed, I think this is pretty obvious right here. You can see back here, I could quilt to this spot, which was about three eighths of an inch from that seam line. Because of the way I advanced the quilt and I did not, I did not pull it as far back as I had it before, I'm now a half of, actually three quarters of an inch, almost an inch away from that seam line. So that's tricky. What that means basically is that my row wasn't, I'm not straight. So I could continue going or I can fiddle with it and fix it and then that way I can make sure that this is quilted consistently. I think the lesson is kind of learned. I don't think I need to reclamp this. Instead, I'm gonna keep on going. And my next row, I will just remember, that space is gonna be a little bit gappy through that area. Now, how could I fix this? How could I make this not happen again? When I did that needle down, I had the foot down, needle down, and I shifted the machine and the quilt over. If I had had my channel locks down, this side one, that locks it horizontally this way. If I had my channel locked down, then that would have ensured the, that the machine and the quilt stayed in the same position horizontally across the frame, and then it would not have slipped. So there we go, lesson learned, and this is awesome. So here we go, let's continue the design, even though I have a little bit more space to quilt in, but that's okay. I can still get some quilting knocked out, and it's still gonna look nice. And even if there's just a random little gap right there in the design, that's okay. I don't think anyone's gonna look at the quilt and be like, oh wow, you missed, you know, three quarters of an inch right there. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen. All right, here we go. Now I'm gonna finish off with just some soft flame shapes. And I hope you can see, I just really think that the straight line across kind of helps just get started. So I'm gonna go through and add that now. Let's call it a victory lap here. And then across the top. Now I'm stitching backwards, so I just wanna focus on that. And watch out. When you stitch uh, from left to right, remember that's the way your machine's designed to run. When you stitch backwards from right to left, your machine may not like that quite so much. Okay, I'm gonna slow this down just a bit. So I'm just doing basically a basting stitch and I'm gonna work my way down and get ready for the next row we're gonna quilt. So here we go, stitch down and stop right there. So I thought about advancing the quilt forward with the needle in the down position. I really, I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but I'm just gonna show it to you and just see if, if this uh, has any merit to it. Uh, so basically same kind of idea, only this time I'm gonna be advancing forward through the machine. And so the needle's in the down position, the foot is in the down position, and then I'm taking off all of the clamps. The point of the needle and foot in the down position, you've got to always remember what that does basically is it locks the position and it locks the two things together so they can't wiggle away from each other. So anytime that I want more control over the quilt, especially advancing it, uh, whether it's side to side or forward to back, keeping the needle in the down position will result in having more control over it. So now you can see, I can just shift this straight back. And because I've got my book back there, <laughs> thank you again, Linda, that was such a good tip. Uh, I've got my book back there, then I know I'm not gonna advance it so far that my needle bar hits that back bar. So I'm just going to push it all the way as far back as it can go, and then I'm going to drop my channel lock. So that way the machine's locked in position. And again, this just gives me more control. Now I've got a spot that can't move. I can tug on it, 
and nothing's going to move because we're locked in position and the channel locks down. Now I could move side to side and maybe I'll take it. No, actually I'm pretty good right here. I don't want to go side to side because I'm right here on the edge. And if I go side to side, then I might risk getting too close now uh, and not being able to quilt all the way off the edge of the quilt. So I'm going to stay right here and now reclamp. So instead of starting from the middle, I'm going to reclamp starting from this point because that's my point of stability on the quilt. I really wasn't sure if this was going to work. So I'm really excited. This is pretty cool. <laughs> All right. So that is nice and stable. And then now visually, I want to make sure you can see how this clamp, the edge of the quilt is curling up about a quarter of an inch inside. I want to do the same thing here. And if it doesn't look like it's quite in the right place, I can just give that a little tug down. That looks good. And now grab my next clamp. So in this case, quilting back across this quilt, we're gonna be quilting from right to left, okay? So this next row is going to start here. I'm gonna quilt across and I'll reach a point somewhere over here where I can't quilt any further and I don't want to push that. Again, if I push it, I could risk, you know, kind of bumping against the side of my frame and making kind of an ugly mess on it. So I'm going to just go ahead and place a tape where I'm guessing I need to stop. And I'm going to give myself more than enough leeway to say, I know I could quilt at least to right here. And that's going to be about right there. So that's just an eyeball because I know that it's about that much space between my needle and the edge of this carriage and the wheels and all the stuff, all the gear that's on that side. It's about six inches or so. So I'm giving myself that six inches from the frame. That's the rail right there. And then I'm giving myself another inch or two before I place that piece of tape. So definitely ballpark, okay, estimation. Here we go. I've got one more clamp on that side. That's looking good. And now I left this side leader cloth here and all I have to do is grab my pins and pin this back in place. And when I'm pinning the side leader cloth, I'm giving that quilt backing and batting just a gentle tug. It's not a harsh tug, but just a gentle tug to make sure that it is nicely tensioned there. Okay. Now I want to go on ahead and roll the quilt. And this is another thing that the leader cloth does make a little bit easier, but I don't think it's, impossible to do without it. And that is just to start the roll and we're gonna roll it to the inside, just like so. Okay. That looks great. All right. And now we've got a little bit of fluff there. Yeah, that feels so much more, you know, locked in position nicely because that has a little bit more oomph behind those straps. There we go. Now, one thing I just realized because I advanced the quilt on the side uh, that had that you know, I didn't, I didn't advance the quilt quite the same distance and I was a little low here because I advanced the quilt here, I can make up for that. So I can quilt and reconnect and interlock with my design before it. Uh, and so there won't be a gap between the two rows uh, because of the way I advanced it here. And that was kind of a happy accident. Now that also means though, that as I get further down, uh, that I will have quiltable space here that's basically not being used. Like I, I will be able to get a little bit too close to my row before it further down. That's not a big deal. I just need to be conscious of it and keep an eye on my design. All right, there we go. We are clamped back up and ready to go. And I'm going to stitch straight down, just a straight line down, just so that way I see how much, whoops, and of course channel locks. <laughs> You got to remember to unlock them when you want to go in another direction. There we go. Okay, so straight down. I want to see how much space I can quilt in. And look at that. We've got a lot of space to play. So this is going to be fun. Okay, uh, so 
I'm gonna just click this on, go straight back up, and then now I'm working to interlock this row with the row before it. And I need to speed up because that those stitches were getting pretty chunky. There we go. And here I am bending down just a bit so that way I can see what's going on behind the foot, behind the needle. A lot of that doesn't have to do with this bar. A lot of that has to do with the bulk on the machine. So this is something to keep in mind. Uh, if you feel like you are standing or sitting in a slightly contorted position, please make sure that after a row or two of quilting that you stop and do some stretching. Uh, I had some neck problems and stuff caused by quilting on my home machine for years. And that is definitely something you wanna stretch out and make sure that you kind of reset your body if you have been quilting in one position for too long. I do, honestly, I really, really like standing up to do this because it just feels like, you know, I'm standing up anyway to fiddle with the clamps and stuff. I might as well just stay in a standing position the whole time. And I really like that. Okay, so I'm just interlocking the sharp stippling. I'm just bringing those flame shapes together and then wiggling down as far as I can go. And the nice thing is that sharp tip of the flame shape, I can kind of wiggle that down and run right into the edge of my frame and then make that a point of the flame shape. So this is a great choice for a quilting design for the continuum frame. Now I'm wiggling over, bringing that down and around. And this is what I mean. This is about the point where I um, advanced side to side. And I want you to see, you know, I could have a little bit more quiltable area. Like I can quilt further back here, but because I quilted my design, you know, that's, it's kind of, I've lost a little bit of space. Not a big deal, not a deal breaker at all. But it's just one of those things about being careful when it comes to advancing. And I really think that those channel locks are going to be a big key to using this frame, at least for me. I don't know about you guys, but I think that's gonna be a key to using it for me. Uh, and that is a standard accessory that comes with all Grace uh, Q-Zone frames and the carriages. So that comes automatically with it in your box. So there we go. Let's see just how quick I can knock out the rest of this. I'm gonna time it and try not to gab so much so that you can see just how fast you can knock out this last little bit of quilting. This is one of my favorite designs. It's really important to go on ahead and memorize a nice batch of designs like stippling and sharp stippling because that's really going to be what helps you get the basics of advancing the quilt on the frame and gets your quilts quilted quickly. Sure, we can do a lot more advanced techniques. We can do ruler work on this frame, on our machine, but if you're, you know, if you're looking at speed being the main thing and finishing a lot more quilts, especially bed quilts, baby quilts, throw quilts, then you're gonna want to do nice, open, all over quilting like this. And I think this is a great choice, you know, for me personally, because it allows me to get the quilt on there and get it done, <laughs> teach you the lesson, and for me to learn the basics of using the frame too. So all of that is really good. Okay, so I'm coming up on my tape. I wanna make sure to not stitch beyond that because I think that's kind of the limit of where I can go. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. We wanna shift side to side, but I wanna make sure that the, the quilt stays straight this time so it doesn't shift a little bit downward so I don't end up with a row that's a little bit shorter on one side and a little bit longer on the other. So what I think I wanna do is I wanna bring my line, I wanna wiggle just one more wiggle here and I wanna come as far back as I can get. I think that's a good idea. Or maybe I wanna come as far forward as I can get. Let's think about this for a second. We come as far forward as we can get. That's the limit of the frame. And needle in the down position, shift it over. Then the quilt should stay in the same position. Yes, I actually, honestly, where I am right now, I'm kind of in the middle of the row. Needle in the down position. If I shift it over, it should still stay in the same position if I lock my channel locks. So let's do that. So I'm not going to change my design. I'm not going to wiggle down or up. I'm just simply locking my channel locks. Needles in the down position, foot's in the down position. I'm taking off my clamps. 
<laughs> this is honestly the scariest part. Uh, when you, you know, go to unclamp your quilt, that is when, you know, everything goes loosey goosey. And, you know, that's the moment where, you know, things could kind of go wrong. And that's the scariest part of the process for me, at least. So uh, when I, I have to stop and talk through it just that little bit, so that way I'm sure everything's on the right track before I remove these clamps. All right, so we're gonna do one more shift to the side and then finish this row. And then we are gonna change something up and do something different for the next video, the next couple of rows of this quilt. So here we go. Channel locks are locked. That means that the machine and the quilt will move all together. Shimmy, 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 just down a bit. That looks great. And now lock up right here, close to the machine. And I'm sure that I can quilt to this edge. I've got at least that six inches, but you know, the amount of space that I know I have gear and stuff between my needle and the edge of the carriage. I've given myself even more space. I'd say, you know, give yourself a good eight inches or so from the edge of the quilt to the edge of the frame. So that way you're sure you're not going to get stuck. It's not going to, you're not gonna run out of space basically. You know, the last thing you wanna do is have to advance it three times through side to side when you should only have to advance it two times. There we go. That looks great. Okay, so once again, grab my side leader cloth, grab my little side clamp, clamp that in place, and stick in some pins. I hope this is giving you a perspective on the time involved too, because you know this is each row and you know, yeah, I can quilt about four and a half inches or so within each row. That's not a lot of space, but please consider, I am using a home sewing machine on this frame. You can use up to a 19 inch long arm on this frame if you wanted to. We've got the Grace Cunique 15R or 14 plus, same machine, different names. And uh, we have maybe something else in the works too that can go on this frame as well. So lots of things that you could use. And of course, home sewing machines, there's a lot of home sewing machines that are bigger than this too. Uh, and pretty much from what I understand, uh, any home sewing machine up to those 16 inch set down long arms will work on this carriage. So that's really good to know too. All right, we're back in business. As you can see, that didn't take very much time. If I'm not gabbing so much, I really do get a lot more done. <laughs> So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and click on, oh, channel locks. This time I remembered before I hit, I hit go. Okay, here we go. Let's see if I can quilt the same distance. Coming down, it's perfect. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, that makes me so, so happy. Okay, so what I mean by that is as I come down, let me stop here. That's the tip of where I was before. That's the tip I just made right now. You can see, I basically advanced the exact same amount so that this row is consistent with the last row. I didn't let the quilt slip the way I did the last time. So this is awesome. I definitely think, you know, using needle in the down position, using those channel locks is going to be a big key to advancing the quilt side to side and forward and back because it locks the quilt in position. It locks the quilt with the machine and in a way, the channel locks also locks it with the frame too. So everything kind of works together and then that's gonna make it both faster and easier to advance the quilt nice and straight through the frame and that's gonna make it faster too. So here we go, finishing up this last little bit of the row. And the reason why this is so narrow is because like I said, I lost space whenever I uh, did that advance the last time. So this row was just a little bit more narrow. And here I can push back and you can see I could have quilted, you know, that entire space, but it was just a matter of the row before it, I did not advance straight. So that next row ended up being a little bit more narrow in order to make up for it. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot because I certainly did. This is the first time I have ever shifted a quilt side to side in this hoop frame while quilting design all at the same time. So I'm really excited. And I think using that needle down technique and the channel locks, 
I think that's going to make a very big difference in the control you have over the quilt and how it shifts through the machine. And I think it's gonna make the whole process faster so you can get back to quilting. So I hope that you enjoyed this, learning how to do this. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. Now, if you'd like to learn more about this Q-Zone hoop frame and using your home sewing machine like a long arm, come and check it out at leahday.com slash Q-Zone. I am a grace dealer and I have everything that you need to get started. The Q-Zone frame, the leader cloth, the speed controller, and a stitch regulator if that's the route you wanna go. So come and check out the frame and all of the accessories that it comes with at leahday.com slash Q-Zone. Until next time, let's go quilt.